What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Instabug, a pretty well-known platform to help you monitor your performance in your mobile apps, catalog bugs, get feedback, and ultimately build the highest quality application. We'll go through some real world examples, integrate Instabug, and see what it can actually do. Before we jump into things, start by dropping a like down below, hit subscribe if you're new here, and let's talk about Instabug. So here we are on their website. You can go ahead and create a free account, which I've done already. We can already see first and foremost that this is used by some of the largest companies out there with apps with hundreds of millions of users. Think Lyft, think T-Mobile, Verizon, eBay, Asana, the likes down here. We're gonna start by hitting the login button at the top right. I am already in fact logged into my account, so it'll bring us to our dashboard. Now before we actually set up an application, what I've taken the liberty of doing is getting one of my existing projects that we're going to go ahead and open up and run in a simulator. This project basically is a simple dessert recipe app. And for the purposes of this video, this is where we are going to be integrating Instabug and seeing all that it has to offer. So I'll go ahead and give it a run in a simulator so we can get a quick glimpse as to what this app is. Feel free to follow along with a empty project or any of your real world applications. So here we are in the desserts app. We got a today tab. We've got a search with a bunch of recipes. We've got browse, saves and more. So this is essentially the app in a nutshell that we are going to be integrating Instabug in. So let's go ahead and jump right to it. So once you're logged into the dashboard, we're gonna go up here to this drop-down menu and I'm gonna select add application. The first thing it's gonna ask me for is the platform that we wanna add for. Now, of course, this being iOS Academy, you can probably guess which one we're gonna pick, but I'll take a pause here and just mention that a variety of platforms are indeed supported for, to meet your organization's needs or in the future, if you ever wanna build like an Android app, you know, Cordova, Unity, Xamarin, the likes. So we'll go ahead and stick with iOS, just like that. And we'll also go ahead and give this a name. So my app is called Just Desserts, which is what we'll call it here. And we'll hit this button to save and continue. Now the next thing we actually wanna do is integrate Instabug into our application. Now the easiest way to do that is by bringing the SDK through CocoaPods. We'll go ahead and close up our Xcode window there. And we already have CocoaPods initialized for this project. So we'll open up the existing pod file like so. And we wanna bring in the Instabug uh, CocoaPods. So I'll copy and paste this and we'll bring this on in. Once you've updated your pod file, we'll go ahead and install it by CDing into the project folder and running pod install like so it'll go ahead and bring on in instabug should be fairly quick so once that's good to go we can once again open up our project workspace and give this a run now we're not quite done yet we do actually need to add one really important line to get this to get hooked up to initialize the instabug sdk so what we actually need to do is initialize it in the app delegate so we'll jump into the app delegate here we're going to come up here and say import Instabug and we want to initialize once our app finishes launching the Instabug framework with our particular application token. Now, the simplest way we can go ahead and find that integration information is by going to this little settings icon here towards the bottom left. And you'll see that there is a integrations uh, link here. And actually this integrations is actually for third party. So that's not what we want to do. So let's see, we've got rules in here, report, categories, uh, dsims, tags, and what I'm looking for is SDK integration. It's actually at the very bottom there. And here you'll see the same instructions for bringing in the CocoaPod, importing it, and the most important line being actually initializing the Instabug singleton. We can actually just click copy and paste this line in like so, and we will be good to go. So let's go ahead and give this a run. And let's see if anything fancy has actually happened in our app. And as you can probably expect, nothing seemingly has happened. So what do we actually get with this integration? Well, if we take a look at the line that we've brought in, there's a couple of things going on. First and foremost, we're starting up Instabug with a particular token, which is unique to our application. And we're also saying that we're gonna be invoking Instabug on either a shake or a screenshot. 
So let's go ahead and invoke a shake on the simulator here by selecting it. And I believe under debug or features, there is a shake option. So let's see if we can find it. I believe it actually is under device. We'll go ahead and hit shake and we see something pretty cool happen over here. So we got this modal alert and we have an option to report a bug, suggest an improvement and ask a question. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. We'll hit the keyboard shortcut to have it show up. And we're gonna start by tapping on report a bug. So perhaps we wanna report a bug. So we can see first and foremost that we already have a email field that is filled in here for my previous testing. We'll go ahead and actually update this to be our email, the person who is submitting the bug report. And maybe I'll submit some content related to this report, perhaps along the lines of image looks too large. Now, one thing to take note of, which is really great here, is you can attach uh, images to your bug report. It already has captured the current screen we were on. We can click it and open it up and see what it is. But down here, we have an option to take a screenshot, select from our gallery, as well as start a screen recording. Now, we need to do one more thing before we can use these features because we need to add permission to our info plist. If I go ahead and actually tap it, our app will crash. Now, before we do that, We'll just hit this little send icon at the top right and we'll see that our report was submitted. So now that it actually submitted and has dismissed, let's go back to our project navigator. We'll click on the info tab up here and inside here, we wanna make sure that we have the privacy uh, strings in here for both the microphone as well as for the photo library. So we're gonna say privacy and we want the microphone usage description. Please allow access to record. And the other one that we want here is privacy. And specifically, this should be the photo library usage description. And again, for the actual string, we'll say, please allow access to choose photo. Go ahead and give this a run. And now when we actually shake the device or simulate a shake here in the simulator, we'll see that we can once again click on this and let's actually say, hey, we want to start a screen recording. And we'll see a button at the bottom right where we can click to record. We'll actually go ahead and first allow this permission. We'll click on this and we see that things start to record. And actually you can navigate around the application. And the really cool thing about this is sometimes bugs are not easily uh, you know, a good candidate to be screenshotted. So what you need to do in a lot of instances is actually record a video. And I just hit pause there and you can see not only did it attach the screenshot, but it actually attached the video as well. So I can actually get rid of that screenshot and I can say, once again, the contents here, some video of the issue at play. We'll hit this button to send this bug report into cyberspace for our developer team to address it. Now, one other thing that I would like to call out before we jump to the Insta bug uh, dashboard to see what is being logged is we can change what actions actually invoke that menu to show up from the Insta bug framework. So right now we can shake and have it show up, but we've also said have it show up when the user screenshots. Now, if we just hit this, we can see that we can add a floating button as well. We can add a pan gesture. So let's see floating button in action. And we can get a variety of invocation styles to actually show up. Now, for floating button, this one's pretty self-explanatory. We have a floating button, big surprise. We can click on this and it'll bring up the actual prompt. One really nice thing about this is that the prompt allows you to not only submit a report for a bug, but also suggesting an improvement. So for suggesting a improvement, perhaps I can say, add more dessert categories, and we really mean it. So we're gonna add a exclamation mark here and go ahead and give that a send. All right, looks pretty good. Let's jump on over to our dashboard and see where these reports actually went. So we'll go back to our uh, application up here. We'll click the drop down and we'll see we have Just Desserts Beta and we also have Just Desserts Live. These are pretty self-explanatory. You can disambiguate your beta application versus your production application. If I go to beta, on the left here, we have a couple options. 
We have bugs, we have crashes, we have performance, we can monitor a variety of things as well as releases. So I'm gonna click on bugs and here we'll see the bugs that have been logged. So here is the latest one that we logged and before we take a look at the screenshots that have come in, let's see the other information alongside it. So first and foremost, we see the description or the comment that was added. We see additional details like the Apple version as well as the build number. We'll see the iOS version running. We'll see the location and a disclaimer, this is not my personal location since we're on a simulator. We'll also see things like the architecture amongst a variety of other helpful info like your current view, which actually tells you exactly what view the user was on. That way the developer doesn't need to go and fish around to figure out what has actually happened in case it was an actual bug report. Now we can view even the hierarchy here to see what is going on. So this is your view hierarchy. And the coolest things are that you can see the environment that the user is working in. So if we scroll down here, you'll see the latest log that a tap occurred, a view appeared, another tap occurred. Uh, you know, we sent an actual API call endpoint or a request to this API endpoint here, and it was a get request. So what's really great is not only is Instabug a very easy to integrate framework to report bugs and feedback, but it's actually doing a whole lot more under the hood, including logging network traffic, view hierarchy, and interactions. So of course here we can assign this bug to someone on our team. So let's say I wanted to assign this to myself. Boom, this is now up to me to fix. And I can also give it a priority. We can say perhaps this is a absolute major issue. So we're gonna assign it as major, just like that. And we can also adjust the status. Let's say I started working on it. I'll say this bug is now in progress. So this entire offering from Instabug is not only a simple way to once again log things coming in that are perhaps broken, but it's a fully managed platform to really triage actual work items, work on them, log them, and then close them out as actually being finished. So we can click through the other ones that we logged here and we'll see the screenshots that had come in. So right here, of course, we have a video and I can go ahead and click and play said video. We'll see the actual video that was recorded, very high quality, pretty awesome. And we'll just click to this third one and we'll also see the same thing here. The other thing that I briefly want to actually touch on, which we uh, glossed over is right below, even, even above uh, the log here, the recent log, the console log, we'll see a couple other charts. Specifically, we'll see things like CPU load, memory, storage, connectivity, and battery. So perhaps your app is crashing when the user goes to a particular controller or when the user performs a specific action, you'll very clearly be able to see a memory spike if it were to happen. So in our case, you know, we can hover over this and see that, you know, we were using 32% memory, 265 over 839 MB. And we can also see things like your CPU load, in this case, 9.3%. You can see as it changes and fluctuates over time. And this is also a really critical aspect of debugging as anyone who's you know dipped their toes into the world of mobile development is familiar with. So cool, so that is bug reporting. Let's take a look at crashes here. So crashes is basically what it sounds like. You can log crashes and see stack traces amongst other information here. Some important call outs here, when you want to see a crash in action, it's important to do it on device and make sure you're detached from the debugger so the crash actually uploads. So the way we're going to simulate this is when the user goes to the second tab in our application here, we are going to invoke a crash. I'm gonna both do it on my real device that I've got connected here as well as a simulator just to make sure one gets uploaded. So once we go to this controller, which I have called the browse view controller, we're gonna do something silly to cause a crash. So at the bottom of view did load, what I'll go ahead and do is we'll have a array of perhaps a single element and perhaps after a delay, we'll say async after now plus We'll say now plus perhaps two seconds. We're gonna to try to print out the second element in this array at index one. And of course it's going to crash because we only have one element. So let's go ahead and give this a run and make sure that it is in fact crashing. So I'll go ahead and clear out my console here, tap on the second tab and we should see a crash in one, two seconds. There we go. So we definitely crashed here. 
Now we want to detach from the debugger. So we're gonna click debug up here and we're gonna hit the detach option like so. I am also gonna give this a run on my actual device that I've got connected here. And we're gonna induce a crash by going to browse on that as well. So if I come back here and give this a refresh, chances are we're not gonna see our crash because we were connected to the debugger at the time of it crashing. So we're gonna actually give it a crash here on my physical device once this decides to finish building and deploy to my device. So it looks like it has detached. We've selected the build destination as a physical device. So I'll hit the play button to build and run. So while it's doing that here, we can also glance at our other uh, features available in this dashboard, like our app, app decks. And in here we can see a variety of other uh, information such as our crashing percentage, frustrating, tolerable in terms of our percentiles and how our users are basically reacting to our application's performance. We can actually click out of this little tutorial. And inside of here, we can also see the granular information about things like app launches. How long does a cold launch actually take? What is taking super long if an app launch is really slow? We all know those times where we're using an app and it seems like it's taking forever to start up. We can also see execution traces, network, screen loading, and a variety of really granular nitty gritty pieces of information. So here we can actually see all of the uh, network traffic going in and out of the specific uh, app that we're running. Everything from the API calls to get desserts as well as the network traffic to log Instabug related uh, usage. So now that this is giving uh, being run on my physical device, I'll go ahead and uh, switch to the Browse tab and it will in fact crash. And I'm gonna go ahead and detach this from the debugger by just pressing stop and making sure that I give this a run once more, once detached on the debugger, go to browse and have it crash once more. All right, it has in fact crash. And we can go to the crashes tab, give it a refresh and we should see our crash show up here. We may need to switch to just desserts live and back to just desserts beta. Sometimes there is a bit of latency like you saw right there for the upload to appear. But here, in fact, we can see, switch to crashes once more, that crashes have appeared. Now, of course, inside of crashes, we can see a variety of information as well and debug them as needed. So that is Instabug and its platform in a nutshell. Very, very commonly used by large applications, very trivial to integrate and almost a must have for anyone who is building a application that you expect to get feedback for via through test flight or any other means and distribute on the App Store. I've left a link to the Instabug platform down below in the description. If you haven't tried it out, definitely do so. If you're new here and haven't subscribed yet, don't forget to hit subscribe. Hit that like button if you haven't done so already. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next one.